by now you already know how we're going to go ahead and get this ball on the first thing is we're going to copy the ball image over that's the first step and of course we're going to head over to boot.js and we're going to go ahead and register this down here so let's duplicate this down go ahead and add this ball image in go ahead and add that in like that and we are done. Now we're going to create a prefab for this as well, although we don't really necessarily need to. It makes sense to go ahead and keep everything nice and tidy. So I'm just going to copy over the structure of brick again, and we're going to create the prefab just in here for the ball, paste this in, and let's switch over these two things here. Okay, so again, we're going to enable uh, physics body on this because of course uh, it uh, is part of our physics system when it hits something we're going to remove immovable because of course we need the ball to move and we're going to go ahead and set this check world bounds which is really important to true all that's going to do is it's going to react to the edges of if we just open our browser edges of our screen of course we don't want the ball to go missing so we want it to react so next thing we want to do is say this body collide world bounds like so set that to true that's pretty much uh, the same thing as check world bound so we're just saying that we want it to collide with the edges and then we're going to go ahead and set the body of this and we're going to set bounce like so so this is going to bounce off of things as that ball is moving okay so we'll come back to this later if it doesn't make too much sense for now we have our ball we need, now need to head over to our game and work out how we're going to place this ball on our paddle so as you'd imagine I'm gonna have another method in here setup ball and we'll go ahead and create this setup ball method just inside of here and look at what we can do so first thing is this dot ball so we can we're gonna assign it to a property within this game so we can reference it later if we need to we're gonna create a new ball passing in this game we're not gonna set the X and Y position for this just here uh, but if we go ahead and pull this in like so so ball and pull this in from that prefab we created. Let's go ahead and add it to our world. So let's go ahead and say this game add existing like we did before for our paddle and pass in this ball. So what this is gonna do is add our ball in. At the moment, this looks like it's a um, brick. So if we just go over to ball and switch that over, then of course we end up with the ball. So you can see that just in the corner there. Okay, so now what we want to do is go ahead and add this ball to the paddle. So we're going to say this put ball on paddle. Now the reason I'm doing this, why would I be creating a separate method to place the ball on the paddle? Well, the idea of this is that when we lose, so when the ball eventually drops to the bottom of the screen, we want to place the ball back on the paddle. So we know that we need this to happen more than once. So automatically I'm thinking, well, let's extract this out to a new method so we can just reference it once again. Now what we're going to do at the top of our uh, game just here, under a constructor perhaps, so let's go ahead and create our constructor out. Let's first of all go ahead and call super which will call the parent constructor and i'm going to go ahead and set this ball on paddle to true that means that we know when the ball is specifically on the paddle so we can react to click events and things like that and that will make sense uh, in a little bit so the first thing that i'm going to do when we call this i'm going to say this ball on paddle and i'm going to set that to true just so we have somewhere in our game to reference and we know that the ball is on the paddle now the next thing that we're going to do is say this ball and we're going to say reset this paddle body x so the x-axis of the paddle and for the y-axis we're going to set this to the y-axis of the paddle subtract this paddle body height so of course the x-axis of the paddle is going to be in the very center of the world so what we're now doing is placing this ball on another object based on that object's x-axis position and then we're saying the paddle y minus the height of the paddle the reason that we're doing that is otherwise it would sit directly in the center of it so as an example if i just set this to this paddle y we'll see the problem and then i'll bring that back in in a minute so let's go over and you can see that sure enough that ball is pretty much placed where we want it but like i said the reason that we're subtracting the height of the paddle is just so it goes ahead and sits on top 
Now, the one thing that you'll notice is it just floats floating in the middle. It's not doing anything. So what we need to do is we need to add an update method to our game to keep this in place. So let's just go down to the bottom just here. We're going to create our update method unless it's already in here by default. I don't think it is. No, it's not. So inside of update, this is going to work in much the same way that everything else did. So update here reacts to things in your world, in your game, and goes ahead and allows you to do things. And this will happen in here as well. Just to give you an example of this, if I just log test out here, you can see that this is just constantly re-rendering. Uh, and you can see this is very, very quick. So it's just constantly logging out test. Now, what we want to do inside of our update method is say, if the ball is on the paddle, and we know that we have that variable available now. So if this ball on paddle, then we just want the ball body on the x axis to equal this paddle x minus the ball width divided by two. And I'll explain why this works in just a minute. So ball width divided by two. Now let's just go ahead and check this out. You can see now that this is just following the paddle around nicely and that's working. Now the reason that this works is if the ball is on the paddle, we know that we set the ball on the paddle. We don't wanna do anything with the ball. We don't want to release the ball all we want to do is set the body of the x-axis of the ball matching the paddle's x-axis because we want that to stay, of course, in the center. And then we're going to subtract the ball's width divided by two. Now, the reason that we do that, if I just get rid of that, notice that this is slightly unaligned. It's very difficult to tell, but it's slightly unaligned. What we want to do is center that in the very center. So we take the ball's width divided by two, and that will give us the actual position. Now, one thing that you might have noticed is when you refresh the game before you've moved your mouse, the paddle is actually over on the very left hand side. And if I go ahead and slightly move my mouse, then it starts to match up. There's not really much we can do about this in terms of actually immediately matching this to the position of our input, but we can make a slight change so it doesn't sit on the very left hand side. So just a really quick fix here. If we go over to the paddle here, what we did is took the X axis of the game input and set it to the X axis of the paddle. Now, if I just log out this game input X, just to show you what happens when we immediately refresh, notice that zero until we slightly move and then we jump over. Now to go ahead and get around this, what we could do is we could say if and say this game input X equals zero, then we just want to return and do nothing. All that's going to do is it's going to position the paddle where we wanted it originally, which is directly in the center. And now when we move, it kind of flips to match up with the uh, position, but at least it's not hanging over on the very uh, left-hand side. So we now have our ball on our paddle and we're going to get to the real fun stuff in the next part where we're going to release the ball so we can start uh, interacting with everything else in our world.